Okay, boys and girls, this is 2.1, finding area and perimeter of triangles. Last week, we found the area and perimeter of rectangles. This time, we're going to switch now to triangles. Triangles, like rectangles, are known as polygons. A polygon is a shape composed of line segments called sides, and they're joined together. They're joined together by a vertex, and a vertex, or vertices, if there's more than one, in this case, there are three vertices in a triangle, and these vertices can be found in polygons, and it's where two sides of a polygon meet. So we have three sides and three vertices. In a rectangle, there are four sides and four vertices. Polygon, which is a shape composed of line segments called sides that are joined together by a vertex, or vertices if there are more than one of a polygon and it's where two sides of polygons meet. This is what we learned last week. We found area and perimeter of rectangles. We have the width that runs from top to bottom or bottom to top and we have the length from left to right and right to left and to find the area we multiplied the length times the width and to find the perimeter we just added all the sides and usually the top and bottom sides are the same length in a rectangle and the width is the same for a rectangle. So we multiply the length times two and the width times two and found the perimeter after we added them. There's two ways to find perimeter. Now we're moving on to the triangle. Something you need to know about the triangle is that it is three sides and it's half of the area of a rectangle. So here's an example of a rectangle and if you cut it in half these two triangles are equal. They're just they're just in different orientations but they're equal. If you use the area formula when, uh, width times length and divide it by two you'll be able to find the area of one triangle. But in triangles the width is called the height and they do that because it's a three-sided figure and there's only one top to bottom side. And the base is usually where the, the triangle rests. And the base would be what the length would be in a rectangle and it runs from left to right and it's usually where the triangle sits and that's the base. So here's an, another example of half of half of a rectangle to find the triangle. So here's another rectangle. If we cut it in half, we have two equal triangles. So if you find the area of this rectangle and divide it by two, you'll be able to find the area of each of these single triangles. Now look at this one. This is a little different than these two, but we have one triangle in the center. And if we create a rectangle around it and put these two yellow pieces together, will they fit in the white triangle to make it two equal triangles, will that formula of finding the um, area of this one rectangle and divide it by two, will that be, will we be able to find the area of this triangle? Will these triangles, so we're going to focus on triangles now, and this is on page 37, 35 to 37 of 2.1 in covering and surroundings in your textbook. No, you do not have to copy this down. We're looking at four characteristics of a triangle. We have a right angle and a right angle measures 90 degrees, sometimes indicated with a small red square. So if you see a triangle and you see a red square, that means that that is where a 90 degree angle is. So here's a right angle and it's found in this right triangle. Here's a different triangle and the right triangle can be found from the vertex to the base in one per perpendicular line. And we also have in this triangle, we have the right angle here, indicated with the red square. And you can usually find a right angle from the vertex down to the base. So vertex, draw a straight line to the base, and that's a right angle. Same with this perpendicular line 
from vertex to base, and that's your right angle. So if I were to find a um, straight edge, this is a square, and there are four right angles in this square. If I were to put it here, that is a right angle. If I put it here, that is the right angle. And if I were to put it here, I have two right angles. There's one, and there's two. Now right angles are important when finding the height of a triangle in order to find the area. So height is really important to locate. And you can locate a height by finding the top vertex, drawing a straight line that's usually that usually creates a 90 degree angle to the base, and that's your height. We're gonna practice that some more in this lesson. Now we have what's called perpendicular lines, and perpendicular lines are two lines that form a right angle. So here's a perpendicular line from vertex to base, and then from the 90 degree angle to the end of the base, so that's those are perpendicular lines. We have perpendicular lines here and perpendicular lines here, the dotted or the dashed red lines and the base. So to find perpendicular lines, once again, you find the highest vertex opposite the base and draw a straight line that's 90 degrees from the base. And that's a per those are two perpendicular lines. This is the base, it's resting on the floor base resting on the floor and everything above that is is floating above the base they're usually vertexes and sides and then you have the height so the height is our um, is the perpendicular distance from the vertex opposite the base so here's the base and opposite the base would be this vertex not this vertex or this vertex it would be opposite directly opposite they don't touch so here's the base, and the opposite vertex is here. And then you draw a line from that vertex at a 90 degree angle to the base, and that would be your 90 degree angle, and these two would be perpendicular lines. Then here's the base, and you find the height by locating your vertex opposite the base and drawing a line that's 90 degrees from the base. And find the height by locating perpendicular lines that form right angles, and that's where you find your height. And the base is the side of a triangle where it rests. Triangles are half of a rectangle. And when you draw a diagonal line inside of a rectangle, you create two equal triangles. So if you were to find the area of this rectangle and just divide it by two, then you can find the area of this, of this triangle. So I'm gonna cut them and prove to you that these are equal, that these are equal, and that together with these two, they're equal to that. Here's that rectang the rectangle, and I'm gonna cut it in half, freehand it, as best I can. And are these equal? Yes, those are equal. I'm going to cut this in half diagonally. And if I layer these on top, are they equal? Yes, they are. All right. Let's get here. And here. So will these equal this one? Here's that one. And that one. So there are two equal triangles in every rectangle. So if I were to find the area of this rectangle and divide it by two, I'll be able to find the area of this triangle. Now the reason why I would do that as opposed to count each square unit is because not all of these are perfect squares. They're not cut equally. 
along the diagonal line. So it's really not a precise calculation of area. So instead, I would calculate by finding the area of this full rectangle, cut it in half, or divide it in half, and that would equal the area of that triangle. Same with this one, and same with this one. 